Hi, I'm Louise Herbert. I'm Head of Marketing for the Europe and North America regions for FSS Technologies. And I'm here today with um, FSS's Head of the Payments Practice for Canada, Jesh Shawant. Jesh, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, thanks, Louis, and thank you for uh, having me in this forum. Uh, so this is Jayesh. I head the payments practice for FSS in Canada. So as a digital payments leader, my role is to focus in aligning uh, the customer strategy for generating value to increase in digital footprinting and as well as generating revenues for our customers. Thank you. Great. Well, we're, um, we're putting um, Jesh in the hot seat today uh, to talk about payments and Canada, which is a, a fantastic combination. Um, but uh, there's a lot of digital transformation going on in Canada. Um, I think the whole world is, is watching very with great interest. Um, and that's really playing out in the payment space. Um, but in your view, Jesh, um, what do you think are, are three key trends that are, are really driving this change? Uh, well, I think uh, digital transformation uh, is typically creates new business processes, culture and customer experiences, or you modify your existing processes uh, to adapt to the new challenging business requirements and market requirements. And I think transformation is a continuous journey. Uh, the customers are increasingly getting agnostic about their financial and banking service providers. Uh, they want better experience. Uh, they want personalized banking. And they want to use their smart devices uh, to perform their day-to-day -day banking. Uh, based on uh, the Payments Canada survey that I read a few weeks ago, 65% of consumers between the age of 31 to 42, uh, which is a key banking demographic, would actually like to open their banking accounts with Amazon, Apple, or Google if they were offered. So I think in my view, it's very important for the financial institutions uh, you know, to adapt to what the tech leaders are doing or, or the tech industry players are doing. And there are three key elements which would really, really help, uh, you know, the financial institutions uh, to adapt and provide that experience to their customers. The first one is the real-time data analytics. Uh, the ability to process, analyze the data in real time and making an important role in understanding how to use that data to offer personalized experience to your customer will be a game changer in, in, in digital transformation space. Uh, I think the second one is implementation of AI. I think AI will be AI should be used in banking products not only to improve efficiency but also to predict customer patterns uh, and and understanding the behaviors of your customer, which can typically uh, also help fuel the growth of businesses. Um, the last thing where I see the digital transformation uh, will kind of flow into is the cloud native infrastructure. Uh, as we as we progress forward. Uh, open banking is, is going to play a very big role, especially within the financial institution space, uh, which will not only fuel uh, growth for uh, the fintechs, uh, but also will provide a better service, service and experience for customers uh, where they can transact through one channel, but, but get different services through the same channel. So I think, I think digital transformation will be a continuous journey. Uh, to provide a better service and a personalized banking experience to customers. Mm. And of course, with this, we've seen uh, with this transformation, we've seen uh, on the infrastructure side, uh, a lot of the banks are, are concentrating very heavily on their front and middle office area, yeah. but maybe to the neglect of, of what's happening at the back office end. Um, would you have any views in terms of, you know, why the banks should really be looking at that area in particular? Uh, yeah, I think I think what the bank uh, you know needs to do is uh, take a look at you know uh, you know how is their back office system operating today. With most of the investments or the focus gone in enhancing or modernizing their real time payment system or their payment hubs or their payment infrastructure, uh, the real question that that someone needs to ask is: Can the back office per, uh, processing uh, engine perform uh, the reconciliation as soon as the transaction is in the system? Uh, can it uh, monitor the financial position real time? Can it do an immediate posting and, uh, and schedule the batch reconciliation? Does it have an ability uh, to provide an end-to-end -end transaction workflow for chargebacks or disputes of a representment? Uh, how difficult is it to introduce a new channel or a new mandate into your back office system? I mean, how much effort, how much cost? And I think, I think that is where I think the next step of transformation or modernization uh, we'll get into. Uh, typically, what we have seen with our customers who have invested into FSS Recon, they were able to replace the manual processes uh, and reduce their cost by almost 50%. Uh, 
Um, we've also seen by transforming uh, into uh, the FSS recon, uh, the time spent by the administration, IT and operation is significantly reduced. Uh, last but not the least, uh, it also by automating and creating more efficiencies, uh, you can reduce your losses and write off. Um, you know, the audit cost definitely can come down and the downstream cost of operations can be heavily reduced. So I think, I think uh, you know, it is detriment that the uh, you know, financial institutions and industry which are reconciling transactions uh, should start exploring at automating uh, or creating more efficiencies in looking at and exploring real-time settlement and reconciliation process. Mm -hmm. And, and a part of the, the, the other half of this equation is, is all about data as well. Um, I know we've discussed this in the past about just how vital um, banks, you know, it is for banks to actually really leverage those digital assets. Um, again, can you give us some, some, maybe some use cases that you, you, you have in, in mind? Yeah, I think, I think it's a very good question. And we have been talking about data for a very long time. Uh, and, and we are seeing some of the uh, tech firms like, like Google's and Amazon's utilizing the data quite efficiently. Uh, and, and I think the financial institutions or the banks needs to analyze the customer data to make uh, finance personal and to provide personal banking experience. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very important. I, I'll give you some example, right? I mean, um, the banks typically can actually analyze the client's income and expenditure uh, as to how the you know, incomes are growing and where the expenditures are going and can come up with some kind of programs uh, to give unique offers in their lending space for maybe low value or a high value transaction. Uh, it could also help them to segmentize their customer base, which I'm sure you know, most of the banks would have today, but having a better insight into data can help you create uh, not just a segmentation of high value or low value, but someone who is low value today can become a high value in the next three years. And by having some kind of a pattern where his incomes are growing, can help you predict that segmentation for now and you can target that uh, customer itself. Um, the other aspect of um, looking at this data is also risk assessment and, and fraud prevention. I mean, how can you look at the patterns um, that are driving the fraud in, in, you know, uh, into this space? Um, last but not the least, I think uh, you know, the most important aspect of data is to create uh, a personalized banking experience for customers. I mean. Uh, you know, if you can look at the historical data uh, and create a personalized experience, that will drive results, that will drive revenue and create a better ROI. Um, in terms of utilizing the data more effectively, I think, uh, you know, it will definitely help uh, in increasing engagement with the customer. We'll have a better conversion rates. Uh, it will improve your customer loyalty and retention. Uh, enhance customer experiences because now you're offering personalized banking. Uh, there's a consistent message going across all the channels. Typically, I go to an ATM, I'll see one offer. When I come on my online banking, I'll see another offer. Uh, whereas there could be a consistent message by having the data where you're segmentizing, untargeting a customer based on an individual basis. You can actually send consistent messages across all the channels. And that would lead to more ROI because there's more probability that the customer is going to get the offer that uh, will be presented across all the channels. So I think, I think in, in the nutshell, data will play a lot of role. Uh, introduction of machine learning, patterning, and introduction of AI could help create that experience, which is very personal um, uh, to uh, the, the banking clients. Mm. It, sounds, um, it sounds like the, the banks and, and other players, obviously, who want to, to be in this space, Sounds like they need to have quite a bit of support in terms of maybe you know the right tools for the job and certainly some services. Um, what do you think FSS has to, to to put on the table and to offer here in this area? Yeah, so I'm I'm very much excited about uh, some of the new products that FSS teams and my teams are working on. Uh, we have multiple products that uh, mm -hmm. we serve different customers across different geographies, um, and and the way we have structured our FSS teams. Uh, is we have a licensing offering for our customer as well as the FSS net, which is the hosted offering. Uh, the hosted is very interesting because it gives um, kind of a, a payments in a box or a bank in a box kind of a solution where you have an end-to-end -end hosted payment services uh, backed by the FSS leading edge uh, solutions, uh, which are into payments, reconciliation, data analytics. And it's got the uh, latest infrastructure hosted on cloud. We are cloud agnostics, you know, PADS as a, PADS as certified products. So, so I'm very much excited about the two offerings that we have. 
I, I do believe that there are a few products uh, which are of interest or which could potentially help a lot of our clients in Canada uh, solve the challenges that they're looking at. The first one is smart recon, uh, again, going back to the back office function of um, mm. recon and settlement. Um, it's a fully automated recon suite uh, with built-in machine learning and AI capabilities. And I think it's extremely prudent now that we introduce some of the latest technologies into some of the back office function not only it increases efficiencies and helps you improve your operational uh, you know, timelines, but it also reduces the leakages that are caused by your fees or chargebacks uh, or, and the losses that sometimes most of the bigger financial institutions write off. So it, it is much more faster, effective, reduces time spends on investigation, which obviously means you have a better turnaround time for any chargebacks or any imprisonment. Uh, and it's got an exception, uh, you know, uh, end-to-end workflow management. I think that's very prudent and very important as we modernize and, and look at transforming and making it much more easy for customers. From a customer experience perspective, the chargebacks are resolved faster. The disputes are resolved faster. So I think definitely that product, uh, we believe, has got a very interesting market in Canada. Uh, the second uh, product that is of interest, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, fintechs actually getting excited about it, we're seeing... Uh, yeah, you know, prepaid being launched into Canada quite aggressively. Yeah. So as we move forward, I think issuing of a plastic uh, will, will move into a virtual space completely. I mean, no longer people may want to have a physical plastic in their wallet. They might transform into a completely a, a virtual issued plastic on your phone or, or a digital device. And, and that's the product that FSS has. We have a unified card issuance system. Uh, it's a multi-institution, multi-currency, multi-language, multi-channel support. It can support issuing for all the channels. And it's off the shelf plug and play. Um, you know, it can issue your physical as well as virtual plastic fully compliant with the EMV standard, uh, fully PADSS and can be hosted on cloud as well, whether it's Azure or GCP or AWS. Um, the third product, which my teams are currently working on is the data analytics. And like I said, I mean, Data continues to be the backbone now, you know, to, to progress forward and to continue with our, our transformation journey. And FSS has a, a data analytics engine um, called PayPulse, which was built to create personas for each banking customer. It's got built-in user journeys that can drive across multiple customers' uh, individual goals and, and can create that experience for each customer. It will help bank provide that personalized banking experience. The machine learning patterns can actually uncover new potential opportunities and can help the banks find new source of growth. Um, you know, it is also, also important if you look at the data now, is it, it's one of the aspects to accelerate growth, even in an anemic environment. Uh, and having a deeper and more detailed profile of, of your customers can help uh, you know, retain your customer at the same time, provide a better experience. So I think, you know, I'm really, really excited about the products that we have. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, really interested, uh, you know, in, in developing those into the new phase as we digitally transform our products. Mm. Sounds like I should be moving from, from Europe to come over to Canada. <laughs> so there seems to be some really, really exciting, um, exciting things happening over there. So I'd like to thank you very, very much indeed, Jayesh. And uh, yeah, I hope, uh, hope everybody's enjoyed our conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Louis, for having me today on this forum. Thank you. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.